Sometimes I'm right in line with the mainstream thoughts on things. And sometimes I watch a game and I'm like, oh, okay, everyone's going to agree with me on this. And then I talk with my friends Kevin Wilds and Chris Broussard in the morning and I read Twitter and I'm like, oh, everybody watched a different game than me last night. And we'll talk about Brady and we'll talk about the very questionable and at this point concerning Buck secondary. But the takeaway from a lot of people was, well, Mac Jones, 19 straight completions, looking good. Of all those rookie quarterbacks, look at the steady Eddie Mac Jones. And I watched that game and I said, if I'm a Pats fan, I am incredibly depressed that my quarterback ostensibly for the next decade has a ceiling as high as a one floor house. Nick, that's unfair. He lost to Tom Brady, a doink field goal. What do you want from him? You know how I know the Patriots deep down don't yet trust Mac Jones? Because Bill Belichick told you by making an otherwise indefensible coaching decision. So after the 19 straight completions, once Tom Brady had driven the Bucks down the field to retake the lead, the Pats are in a very unique spot. Fourth and three, bless you, less than a minute left. The ball right on the edge of field goal range. And Bill Belichick, the smartest and best coach in NFL history, the best game manager in NFL history, Bill Belichick has a choice to make, and the choice is this. Option A, trust Mac Jones to get three yards, get a shorter field goal for my aging kicker Nick Folk in a driving rainstorm, and guarantee Tom Brady never touch the ball again. Or option B, do not trust Mac Jones to get three yards. Trot out a kicker who was drafted during the Bush administration, who last made a 55-yarder during the Obama administration. Hope he can make this outdoors in a driving rainstorm. And then hope my defense can hold on for dear life for the final 50 seconds to prevent the Bucks from getting in field goal range. Would I rather do that or trust my quarterback to get three yards? And Bill Belichick said, that's easy. Can't trust the quarterback. Kick the field goal. That tells you all you need to know. Folks out here killing Trevor Lawrence for how he played early in the year. Yeah, but then did you watch Thursday night? Made a few really nice passes. Zach Wilson and the four turnovers against the Patriots. Oh, my God. The Jets, what are they doing? Did you see Zach Wilson yesterday? Turns out letting your quarterback play without training wheels, sometimes they can learn to ride that bike faster than you imagine. And then you have the Patriots and the dink and dunk and dink and dunk and screen pass with Mac Jones because they don't trust him to throw the ball 15, let alone 20 yards downfield. He did it once yesterday. It was caught by the Buccaneers. Have the decision. We can guarantee Tom Brady doesn't touch the ball. We can guarantee that this field goal is shorter than 55 yards. We can do all of that if we believe Mac Jones can pick up three yards against a secondary that was injured before the game started, suffered another major injury during the game, or a couple of them actually. Winfield goes out, Carlton Davis goes out, Jamel Dean was already not there, uh, Bunting was already not there, Richard Sherman's out there, not looking like he's ready to play in NFL games, need to get three yards. Nope, I'd rather trust Nick Folk, who up to that point in his career was three for eight on 55 yarders or longer, and had not made one since 2015. That's not Nick Wright's opinion on Mac Jones. That's Bill Belichick's. Bill Belichick watched the drive before when the Patriots were down and a field goal took the lead, but a touchdown obviously made it to where a field goal couldn't beat him. He had a first and goal from the nine, incomplete, incomplete, and then a zero-yard gain. And then he watched on that drive where the only significant play was a pass interference. The, The Patriots, by the way, do have a way to get junk plays. Evidently, it involves Jacoby Myers 
throwing the football because that's who they trusted to make the big play on the second to last drive of the game. The numbers are not lying here. Can we show the worst quarterbacks this season on passes that travel at least 20 yards in the air? All right, so you have Jacob Eason, who's not a starter. Taysom Hill, who's not even a quarterback. By the way, Sean Payton, great job yesterday. Hey, Taysom, go throw a bomb. Okay, that's picked off. Davis Mills, who is not ready, and then Mac Jones. That's a passer rating of 10 on passes that go at least 20 yards. And he's throwing a bunch, and not a bunch of them, but more than those other guys by far. So I watched a different game than everyone else if they came away from thinking, oh, Mac Jones. Tough to win in this league these days if you can't score 20. And the Patriots have now lost games where they've scored 16, 13, 17. The one game they broke 20 was when Zach Wilson was playing for them. Ah, Nick, he's young. The problem is this. The whole AFC is young. Mahomes, Herbert, Lamar, Josh Allen, Baker, Burrow, Lawrence, throw Zach Wilson in there. That's eight guys all around Mac Jones' age. Who's he ever going to be better than? Of those eight guys, who will he ever be better than? Maybe Zach Wilson? Sure. So his best case scenario is he is the exact median in his own conference at quarterback. That was my takeaway from last night. No moral victories here. Patriots, if they could have picked up three yards, win that game, didn't trust the quarterback to pick up three yards. Other side of the conference, other side of the league to the NFC, a team whose fans right now should be feeling the best they have felt in at least five years and maybe 25 years is the Dallas Cowboys. So I think the takeaway for a lot of people is going to be Zeke. Wrote him off too early. I might have been one of those people that wrote him off too early. That's the best game Zeke's had in three years. The last year Zeke was a truly excellent running back was 2018. And he had a monster playoff game against Seattle. The last playoff game the Cowboys have won. This was the best game he has played since that playoff game against Seattle in the 2018 season. But that's not my takeaway. Dak Prescott's four touchdowns. That's not my takeaway. My takeaway for the Cowboys is very simple. You hit home runs at the top or near the top of drafts, you can remake your defense. The Cowboys seem to have hit a home run in Micah Parsons, and Trayvon Diggs is a star. You watch him, and you're like, how was this guy a second-round pick? He's 6'2", used to play receiver, so has great ball skills, big, strong, physical, athletic, great instincts, everything you want. He's been the best corner with respect to Jalen Ramsey. He has been the best corner in all of football this year. And I understand it's the Panthers. And even though they were undefeated, we have questions about their offense, especially without McCaffrey. I get that. But this Cowboys defense doesn't have to be great. Those of us that thought the Cowboys would be good this year, the math was elite passing attack, decent rushing attack, and a defense that's just not, can it not be bottom 10? What the Cowboys have right now is an elite passing attack, an excellent rushing attack, and a defense that has a chance to be top 10. Not top five, but top 10, particularly once they get to Marcus Lawrence back. They've got a surplus of linebackers. Parsons is awesome. Demarcus Lawrence is coming back. And Trayvon Diggs is a revelation. Second round pick in his second year with five interceptions this year, two more yesterday. If this Cowboys defense is above average throughout the season, particularly when you look at their schedule, it's not just the NFC East, and we can show it to you. It's the other teams, the other divisions they play. It's like, oh, who did we draw this year? Okay, the AFC West, that part's not great. But the rest of it, who who are you playing over the next two months that scares you other than Kansas City? The answer is nobody. You draw the NFC South, which this year appears to have one good team in Tampa. You could say Carolina as well, but they just beat them and beat them convincingly. Final six games of the year, Saints, Washington, Giants, Washington, Arizona's tough, and then Philly. With the way the NFC West is going to beat itself up. Might have the best teams in football, 
but they got to play each other. Packers, Bucks, Cowboys are going to, I'm not saying they're the three best teams in the NFC, but they are the three teams that are going to be competing for the one seed. And the Packers schedule is a brutality. Got even harder by, hey, your bonus game, you get to go to Arrowhead. So if you're the Cowboys, yeah, that loss to the Bucks looms large, particularly when it comes to tiebreakers. But this is the best team you've had since 2016. And 2016, you could have gone to the Super Bowl. It took one of the greatest throws of Aaron Rodgers' career and then an amazing Mason Crosby field goal to beat you in the playoffs. So the last few years, the Cowboys have been more hyped than production. This year, they weren't hyped nearly as much. Dak looks healthy. It's the best Zeke has looked in three years. And holy moly, Parsons and Diggs. Blue chip pass rusher, kind of do it all defensive end linebacker. And right now, the best corner in the NFL Trayvon Diggs, you have those two pieces on your defense. Doesn't really much matter who the other nine are. And the other nine, you got some really good linebackers as well. I got Demarcus Lawrence coming back. Cowboys fans should feel the best they have felt in at least five years. We'll talk to Jimmy Johnson about whether they should feel the best they felt in 25 years. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.